Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Look, firstly, uh, sorry for spamming the old uh, YouTube account there, but um, I thought I'd do a quick follow-up video from, from yesterday on some ideas for moving forward. Um, what I have decided to do is to, is to look at this radio here. Um, it's the last SEC build with an 80-40 meter setup, and I'd always decided to set it up in this configuration here to allow me to easily uh, look at individual modules and pull things out and put other modules in with different designs to see how they worked. So uh, I think with that in mind, this would be actually quite a good way of sort of moving forward and trying a whole raft of different things. So for example, if we were just to sort of move through the radio and sort of think about some of the ideas that are coming to mind, uh, you'll get a bit of an idea of, of, of where I'm going to take the next few 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 months, I guess, as we um, as I move forward with this radio. So at the moment, the RF's coming in uh, through, on this over here, a, uh, a bandpass filter. So there's two filters here, one for uh, 80 meters and one for 40 meters. Um, I'm just debating what I'm sort of thinking about doing is, is making this into um, 80, 40, as well as 20 meters, um, potentially going further. Um, I'll, I'll be restricted there because it's a single conversion radio, so um, um, having image rejection and the like may be a, a problem, but uh, I'm sort of thinking potentially move away from the switch arrangement here and having a, a plug-in board. Um, I tried a while back using diode switching and well, it was all right, you know, you, you certainly do add quite a few components to make it work and you get quite a bit of loss through the diode, so I'm sort of just debating, uh, maybe just going for a simple sort of a drop-in plug module, so um, a, a drop-in filter for, like I say, 80, 40 and tweeter, uh, 20 meters, so that'd be quite nice to sort of have a look at that. Uh, coming forward, the, the uh, RF amplifier here, or the antenna RF amp, um, at the moment, I'm not using that at all uh, on 80 and 40, um, but potentially up there into the 20 meters and higher, uh, it would be of use. At the moment, that's just a 3904 set up as a uh, common emitter uh, amplifier, so it might be nice to to revisit that one and, and have, a, have a look at what could be done in terms of uh, maybe using a, a FET of some sort uh, to, to get a, a lower noise uh, amplifier there. Um, but that would be something to, to revisit, so to speak. So coming into the first mixer, probably no real changes there on the receive side of the house. Um, same with the, uh, the first IF amp. Um, probably won't look at that straight away, but there's always the option there to, to look at again the J310 setup. Um, second IF amp after the crystal filter. Uh, in terms of the crystal filter itself, um, maybe an option to introduce uh, CW into the radio. So have a... Uh, a switch between um, SSB and CW with a, with a much tighter filter. Um, so that could be an option there to, sort of, to think about. Uh, maybe perhaps do that as a, a homebrew crystal filter um, to, to get that sort of a, you know, two or three hundred hertz um, bandwidth filter there. So yeah, something to think about there as an option. Uh, the second IF amplifier, uh, that's currently the, uh, the 1350. Uh, Either leave that in, in place there, and then as been as suggested, maybe look at um, another uh, AGC amplifier there, based around uh, an op amp configured as a, a logarithmic amplifier. Um, that might be an option there. Then also sort of taking off uh, the output of that AGC to drive um, an S meter. Um, at the moment, that's already this white wire here is already an output from that particular amplifier which has been then fed into uh, the Arduino as a uh, as an S meter there but maybe have a sort of a, a moving not so much a moving coil because they're quite expensive but maybe um, have a, a pseudo moving bar down here on the display but anyway suffice to say uh, have another look at that sort of um, AGC amplifier using a, in a different approach um, a la a logarithmic amplifier so that could be an option there also to have a bit of a look at that and a bit of a play around with that um, coming around into the uh, the product detector there, probably leave that as is for now. Um, I think you know there's obviously different ways of doing that, but leave that as, as it is. Uh, audio frequency uh, amplifier there. Um, there's always the option. There, there's been some well some requests to have a look at 
um, audio amplifiers, so um, that could be an option. I'd probably leave that more lower down on the list. I think there's bigger things to fry. For example, the RF power amplifier might be um, higher up on the list rather than sort of playing around with the audio frequency amplifier. And then on the transmit side of the house, so down the corner here we have the uh, the microphone amplifier. Um, I don't know, maybe just revisit that one potentially. Uh, into the uh, the balance modulator, uh, I don't think we'll probably leave that as it is. Um, the two IF amplifiers on either side of the, the crystal filter. Um, nothing jumps out right now as a, uh, as a need to, to play around with those. Uh, at the moment they have man manual gain control through that, um, that diode, as we saw um, in the, uh, a couple of videos back, reverse bias diode, which seems to work quite well as a, uh, a manual uh, gain adjustment there. Coming through to the, uh, the power amplifier side of the house, a um, couple of things sort of go through the mind here. Uh, this, we've got, we got the um, RF preamp, we've got a pre-driver here in the main RF amp. Um, this one, this little amp, well, the pre-driver here is working really well, I'm, so I probably won't touch that. But there's certainly room to have a look at at least um, the RF power amplifier side of the house, the, you know, the big boy. Um, and it has been suggested to, to look at the uh, the 50 watt uh, amplifier design from um, W6JL. Uh, um, and I've actually got a whole stack of these. These are IRF um, Z24Ns. So I'm not quite sure how I've got those, about 15 or 20 odd. Um, who knows if they're actually real or not, but um, that's all part of the excitement of getting stuff from, from uh, places overseas. But uh, yeah, that would be certainly a good option to have a play around with uh, an amplifier based on those. Uh, would have to clearly uh, go for a much better, um, um, what's the word, heat sinking arrangement, rather than those vertical heat sinks that I have been using uh, directly off these. Would probably go for milling some holes into here and having them mounted onto a nice piece of aluminium, a la, you know, a, a proper heat sink. But that would certainly be an option there to uh, to have a look at that that uh, power amplifier. Um, I don't want to go too high in power for the simple reason there. If we look over the back, we've got the low pass filter after the power amplifier. Um, I don't have, and I'm, yeah, I'm at the moment I'm just using um, sort of stock standard ceramic capacitors uh, as opposed to specific or specialist high voltage capacitors. Certainly on, on the, uh, the 80 meter side, uh, these here were harvested out of an old radio, so they certainly will be, but this side not. Um, so I'm just yeah, not not too sure about how high I want to go in terms of power to then um, drive me down to having to try and find or source um, specific high voltage capacitors. Now, that shouldn't be a, a huge issue, but that's something which I sort of bear in mind. Um, and I guess I, I must admit my sort of interests are more around the, the lower power as opposed to um, you know 100 watts plus. But that would certainly be a, a good one to look at, and has come up quite a few times. Um, some other things. Uh, I think uh, I, I do want to try and have a play around with FT8 um, just for a look-see. So I think having some kind of interface coming in on the from a transmit point of side, so some kind of injection in here in the product, to, um, into the balance modulator more the point. Uh, so some kind of interface there, uh, and then on the receive side, um, tapping into the, the audio amplifier somehow. So that would be quite nice sort of just to have a look at what would be required to make up a, a suitable interface um, for the computer, so that would be one. Um, we talked about pan adapters a while back, um, so why not? So why not actually add a pan adapter to this radio? Um, my initial feeling is it would have to be on the uh, the input side of the crystal filter, so on the where the bandwidth has been constrained by the uh, the 2.8 kilohertz uh, filter here, and probably look to utilise a couple of spare displays we've got lying around and um, use that Tensi. And, uh, and to create some kind of tap off here uh, to drive that pan adapter. So that would certainly be something to look at uh, moving forward. So I can sort of see a laundry list of things here that sort of tick off, that sort of meets some of the ideas that have been thrown up, hey, why don't you look at this, but at the same time looking to enhance this particular rig uh, and use it as a, a, a test bed and, and a springboard, so to speak, into other things. Um, I was very kindly given some of these uh, monolithic uh, amplifiers here, these tiny little uh, service mounted devices. Uh, this is an ERA-6SM Plus. Um, DC to 4 GHz 
uh, according to the spec sheet. Um, at the uh, the gigahertz range, it's around that sort of 15-ish uh, odd uh, dB gain. So um, I think it'd be quite nice to, or plus yeah, 50 ohms input output. So it might be quite nice to uh, have a play around with these uh, with the oscope and then and I guess characterize us I, I guess what the performance of these and what the utility of these little monolithic amplifiers would be um, for the homebrew in the HF band. So I reckon that'd be quite good. And looking at the spec sheet, it's there's so little apart from a coupling input coupling capacitor and an output coupling capacitor, uh, one radio frequency choke and a DC biasing resistor coming off VCC. That's it. Um, there's two Darling or two transistors there set up as a Darlington pair, and then um, I think it's about four or five resistors for for internal biasing. But an extremely small and like I say, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, how these could be used um, for HF. So that would certainly be something. Um, one of the other ideas that came up uh, was to, to look at building um, a low RF level signal generator. So um, I could certainly see the utility in that. Um, at the moment, as you know, all I have here in the shack for those sorts of arrangements here is a, um, is a simple a little crystal controlled oscillator here going through, I can't quite call what this was, but it was some whopping big, it might have been about 40 dB or so um, uh, pad here to output a, um, a small little signal at the end. Uh, arguably, it's uncalibrated, it's not variable. Um, while it works perfectly fine, um, it might be uh, interesting to, to have a proper look at what would be, what would be useful, more the point, uh, you know, what would it take to make a, um, a half decent uh, signal source. Like I say, while this works adequately fine, um, it would be a uh, an interesting topic. Two crystals there, one sitting in the 80 meter band and one sitting in the 40 meter band. So um, that might be uh, quite an interesting one to add to the mix. Um, the other thing too, which uh, would be an easy sort of low hanging fruit, would be in terms of the Arduino here, uh, look at some of the same um, sleep code that I used in the portable rig. So when the Arduino doesn't have anything to do, i.e. no one's changing the frequency, uh, therefore the display doesn't need updating, then the Arduino essentially goes to sleep. Um, there's no need to uh, change any or any data going through the SI5351. So, you know, is it, is it actually, is it possible to, to really put this to sleep to reduce any potential for noise? At the moment, this setup is, is very quiet. It's, um, yeah, there's no, there's no rotary encoder noise at all, so uh, I'm more than happy with that. But again, you know, it might be an interesting one just to revisit um, the code there to to try and minimise any kind of noise by putting that to sleep. So that'll be something to look at. Um, just pause here while I sort of look down my list of what else I sort of jotted down. So I think I pretty well covered everything. So, like I say, it's I think it'd be quite a quite a nice way of sort of meeting. Um, some expectations of people to, to look at different things while at the same time keeping to what I uh, what I had thought about this radio and to use it as a springboard to, to try different things. Um, so that's going to be the intent um, for the immediate future uh, and then uh, after that there's certainly options to to relook at things like SDR rigs and potentially, and I'm not quite sure how that would work, um, making a uh, um, an RF SIGGEN. So I know that's come up a couple of times in, in when I've been sort of seeking ideas. Uh, so I guess what's initially going through my mind is potentially it'll be an Arduino, of course, uh, makes it nice and easy with a, um, an LCD display, uh, probably an AD9850, a nice sort of sine wave uh, DDS would be good. And then it would just be a matter of trying to work out how best to provide a, a, a nice sort of range of uh, output voltages. You know, what would they typically need to be um, and then how to get that. So that's sort of going through my mind. And I haven't forgotten about it. Um, it's just, you know, to be honest, not terribly high up on the list because I've got a, a perfectly good one here. But I do acknowledge that that has come up a several times. And, um, oops, there's it. Um, uh, like I say, that's, that's come up several times and um, would, would be nice to look at in due course. Um, what would be nice actually is to build a, um, 
a spectrum analyzer, but that might be looking a little beyond what I can do at the moment. So anyway, so like I say, again, apologies for spamming the uh, the YouTube account, but uh, I thought it'd be useful just to just to clarify what I am thinking and um, that I do appreciate the feedback and um, I can't meet everybody's expectations, so I'm just sort of trying to balance uh, what I would like to do as well as what you'd like to see and try and come up with a happy medium there. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Um, I'll say 73s, I've got some business trips coming up, so I'll be in and out of the office or the, the shack um, over the next month or so. But uh, in between there, um, I'll certainly look to, like I say, uh, tick off that laundry list of ideas and, um, and hopefully that will be of use and of interest to people. Um, and as I've said many, many times, and I'm going to say it again, um, I am not an expert in any way, shape or form in any of this. Uh, this is really about me playing around, experimenting, um, getting things wrong, trying to nut things out. And um, if others can learn from that, uh, i.e. what not to do, then I think I've achieved something. So um, I'll just throw that caveat in now, once again, like I've said many times before. Anyway, 73s, and uh, hopefully that will be... Uh, or you guys or um, guys and girls, I should say, would agree to that and um, can see the value. Okay, cheers all.